We've all heard the saying, if it seems too good to be true, it probably is, right? It's that way in life, and it's certainly that way when it comes to collecting comics. In this video, we're going to reveal why that immaculate Silver Age Marvel comic you just found for a great price might not be what it seems. So, you just got home with your great looking copy of Avengers 88, you found it for a really good price, and when you're giving it a closer look at home, you realize something's off. This thing looks like a modern book. It feels like a modern book. You flip it over to see a Stridex ad on the back cover. What the hell? Was acne even a thing back in 1971? And if it was, I don't think Stridex was around yet. And then it hits you. The bag and board this thing came in says second print. The cover art is the absolute same. It's a 15 cent cover price. So what's going on? If that story sounds familiar, that's exactly what happened to our good buddy Swaggle Haas a few weeks back. As I was watching a recent video on Swaggle Haas's channel, he was detailing the situation I just described, and I knew instantly what had happened. Swag had just stumbled onto something you don't run into every day. His Avengers 88 was a JCPenney reprint. If you want to know how to identify these 55 JCPenney reprints from the originals, then stay tuned as not only am I going to tell you what books were reprinted, but I'm also going to give you the information you'll need to identify these reprints in short order. Let's dive into the history behind these deceptive, but still collectible relics from the early 90s. If you grew up in the 1970s, 80s, or early 90s, then you know that there was no greater joy than when the Sears and JCPenney Christmas catalogs were delivered in advance of the holiday season. Pages and pages of toys, electronics, video games, and for a few select years, even comic books. That's right, amongst the year's greatest toys and other gift ideas was an interesting item called the Marvel Vintage Pack selling for $15.99 in 1992 and 1993, the pack dropped down to $14.99 in 1994. The Marvel Vintage Pack was a great way to access some vintage issues before the days when Marvel Masterworks reprints were widely available and we weren't all walking around with Marvel's entire catalog available in our pockets via Marvel Unlimited. The small price drop that I noted in 1994 was due to a drop in book count. See, the 1992 and 93 packs both came with 20 comics, while in 1994, the vintage pack came with just 15 issues. These JC Printy reprints have nearly been lost to time. Outside of a note for the issues entries in comics.org and a largely incomplete category listing found on Key Collector, there's really only one fairly comprehensive resource of information on these books a long dead website from none other than our good buddies from the East, STL Comics. The entry on the website was last updated on February 11th, 2007 to add information that had been discovered about the 1992 and 1993 sets. And while Comic Sans was still an acceptable font for a website back then, it really hasn't aged well, but we're gonna go ahead and look past that and focus in on the content. The 1992 Marvel Vintage Pack as previously mentioned, was comprised of 20 books. Those books were Captain America 384, Daredevil 267, Daredevil 273, Darkhawk number 5, Fantastic Four 351, Fantastic Four 355, Iron Man 258, Incredible Hulk number 1, the Marvel Milestone Edition, New Warriors 10, Silver Surfer 32, Silver Surfer 33, Sleepwalker 8, Sleepwalker 9, Spectacular Spider-Man 145, Spectacular Spider-Man 156, Web of Spider-Man 81, Web of Spider-Man 83, Wonder Man 2, Uncanny X-Men 268, and X-Men Classic number 47. Despite being part of the Marvel Vintage Pack, most of these issues were just a couple of years old at most. Definitely a swing and a miss on this set. According to SDL Comics' page, this pack was actually offered through the 1992 Sears Wishbook. As far as collectability goes, only Darkhawk 5 and Uncanny X-Men 268 have any noticeable value in the market today. Key Collector notes that high-grade copies for both have a fair market value of $30. The best way to identify books out of this set is the relatively out of place looking 30th anniversary Spider-Man logo in the UPC box. 
These issues all preceded 1992 for their original printings, making this the most obvious identifier. There's one exception to this though, as the Marvel Milestone Edition Hulk number one does not have the Spider-Man anniversary logo because it doesn't have a UPC box like the other issues. The main way you can differentiate the Marvel Vintage Pack Edition from the standard Marvel Milestone Edition is that the MVP reprint has standard issue newsprint pages inside, whereas the original printings had a higher quality glossy paper. Additionally, the 1992 set features common ads that would have been seen in contemporary issues in a back cover advertisement for the new Jim Lee Uncanny X-Men trading card set. And the final indicator lies in the indicia where all of the books in this set are clearly labeled second printing. For the 1993 set, there was clearly an effort made to align the name of the product with what was being offered, as several actual vintage issues were amongst the offerings for 1993. The 20 books included in the 1993 Marvel Vintage Pack were Amazing Spider-Man 330, Avengers 4, Captain America 241, Captain America 371, Excalibur 27, Fantastic Four 51, Ghost Rider Volume 2 Number 10, Incredible Hulk 333, Marvel Milestone Editions of Amazing Spider-Man 1, Tales of Suspense 39, and X-Men 1, Namor the Submariner 8, New Warriors 3, Spectacular Spider-Man 26, Spectacular Spider-Man 27, Thor 312, What If Volume 2 Number 4, X-Men 60, X-Men 61, Uncanny X-Men 245. Like the 1992 books, the 93 Marvel Vintage Pack books featured the 30th anniversary Spider-Man artwork in the UPC box. However, the anniversary verbiage was removed, leaving a weird open space at the top of the box. For the reprints of the older books that did not have a UPC box, there are some slight color variances when compared to the original issues. Featuring common ads found in comics that were printed in 1993 on the interior, the back cover advertises X-Men the Animated Series VHS tapes for the low, low MSRP of just $9.95. However, the 1993 set does not indicate that the books are second printings in the Indicia or anywhere else for that matter. Notable issues from this set include the Avengers 4 reprint, which is actually the most valuable of all the JCPenney reprints with a fair market value of upwards of $80, while the Amazing Spider-Man 330 comes in at 25, Spectacular Spider-Man 27, and Captain America 241 will set you back $20. Closing out the Marvel Vintage Pack offerings is the most dangerous of all of them, the 1994 set. As previously mentioned, the 1994 set only consisted of 15 books, but every single one of those issues was a reprint of a Marvel comic book ranging from 1954 to 1974. The first thing that you will notice with this group is that due to the age of the source material, none of the 1994 reprints have a UPC box on the cover, which removes the most obvious identifier that the preceding sets have offered. The 1994 set includes the following issues. Amazing Adult Fantasy 13, Amazing Spider-Man King Size Special 5, Avengers 88, Captain America 109, Fantastic Four 66, Fantastic Four 67, Incredible Hulk 140, Sergeant Fury 13, Submariner 8, Thor King Size Special 2, Tomb of Dracula 25, X-Men 28, X-Men 62, X-Men 63, and last but not least, Young Men 25. Interestingly enough, a couple of these books are actually reprints of reprints, but they all sport the original printings cover. So yeah, we're kind of getting into some Inception type stuff here. These issues are Fantastic Four 66, which was reprinted from Marvel's Greatest Comics 49, Sergeant Fury 13, reprinted from Special Marvel Edition 11, and X-Men 28, which was reprinted from X-Men 76, back in the reprint era of X-Men before the new team came on the scene. According to the SDL Comics article, the 94 set is known to have suffered a series of production defects, which can make piecing together a minty fresh set of these books rather challenging due to miscut covers being rather common. As you may have guessed with the MCU debut of Adam Warlock on the horizon, the reprint of FF67 is the most valuable issue out of the set, with a current FMV in the neighborhood of $30, while the ASM Annual 5 reprint comes in just below that with an FMV of $25. 
As for identifying this wave of reprints, the most obvious is that Stridax ad on the back cover we talked about in the intro for the video. And in case you were wondering, yes, acne was an issue in 1971, and even more surprising, Stridax was created all the way back in 1956. I mean, who knew? For some unexplained reason, Sergeant Fury 13 is the only issue that does not have the Stridex back cover. In its place is an incredibly 90s ad for Bic pins. 14 of the 15 issues have ads from 1994 in their interiors, with the exception being Young Men 25, which retains all of the original ads from when it was released way back in 1954. The next time you're digging through those long boxes and find a gorgeous copy of a Silver Age or Bronze Age Marvel book with an unbelievably low price on it, tap the brakes right quick and think back to this video. I mean, if you want to bookmark it and come back and rewatch in the future, that's cool too. I'll happily take the views, but most importantly, make sure that you haven't found a sleeper reprint for that vintage Marvel back issue on your list. Alternatively, you can flip this advice on its head and undertake the Marvel vintage pack reprints as a collecting side quest. It's well suited for such an adventure. It's a decent sized group of books. They're all interesting covers and stories to track down as well. And better yet, chances are you're going to find these at fairly cheap prices as sellers may not know or even care about what they have. Reprint can often be seen as a four letter word in some corners of the hobby. Happy hunting. Thank you to Roger Perez for your expertise on the subject and to SDL Comics for hosting this information more than 15 years ago. If you're looking for even more comic book content, then check out our latest top 10 comics list right up here or this other video that YouTube thinks you might like. Until next time, remember to collect responsibly.